hello welcome to the Havache school and today we are discussing continuing with the discussions on landforms that have grouped in east africa due to volcanistic today we are looking at the exclusive landforms or exclusive features that have resulted from volcanistic these are features that are formed when ash, gas, and other molten material are extruded through a vent on the earth's, on the earth's surface. In this, in this case here, magma uh, comes out on the earth's, uh, comes out on the earth's, uh, on the earth's surface to form landforms such as composite volcanoes, or stratovolcanoes, chimney domes, black dome what we call a plague volcano, ash and cinder cones, volcanic plugs, or what we call a volcanic neck, shield volcanoes, or basalt domes, explosive craters, calderas, lava plateaus, hot springs, and geysers, uh, fumarels, among, among others. So we are going to look at one by one and we'll see how exactly these features are formed. The first one here is a composite or what we call a strato volcano. This is a, bi a volcanic mountain which has more than one cone that uh, that's to say uh, has uh, parasitic cones it's a type of volcano uh, made up of alternating layers of ash and lava ejected through a central pipe uh, uh, referred to as a vent referred to uh, as a vent over a long period of time the composite volcano is formed as a result of eruption in cycles of ash uh, uh, of ash series when pressure builds up in the earth's crust as we, we talked about this yesterday molten rock is ejected to the earth's surface through a vent uh, uh, if you look at uh, if you look at this uh, this scenario here for example in this photo we are seeing uh, we are seeing lava uh, coming out of the earth's surface through uh, through a vent through this point here it is coming out and forming small mountains on top of the earth's surface. The eruption begins with great violence, with great violence forming a layer of ash and lava uh, pours out, forming a layer of lava over the ash, over the ash layer. When the eruption occurs, the magma reaches the earth's surface. The pressure underground decreases, but with time, it will build up again, and another cycle of lava. Uh, and ash will be deposited on that which was previously ejected. This process continues until a piece of uh, landform is formed or a composite, uh, composite volcano. If you look at this diagram, we are saying is a volcanic. This volcanic mountain erupts in phases. As you see, the first eruption occurred and formed this downer uh, layer here. Layer, okay. Of, of, mag, of ash and, and magma and after some time eruption will happen again now sometimes if when this eruption is happening a second time it may find the vent is blocked and when that happens it creates what you call parasitic cones such as this one here parasitic cones it uh, a magma gets another way of coming out from the uh, from the underground but on the sides of the volcanic mountain cut through the volcanic mountain forming what we are calling side events through which it accumulates at the border and forms another feature which we are calling a parasitic a parasitic parasitic cone and when that happens uh, that creature uh, that feature that is formed is called a composite a composite a composite volcano a composite uh, a composite volcano with parasitic cones okay okay and layers of ash that is a composite volcano we have examples in east africa of composite volcanoes like mountain kilimanjaro uh, mountain kenya mountain meru uh, longunot elgon Obenyo lengai suswa mahavura uh, that's in the, uganda, in the border between uganda and kenya so these are composite volcanoes you see in this uh, photo here that we have we are seeing mm, we are seeing uh, the mountain uh, the magma is erupting from sides 
these are what we are calling the parasitic cones. Even this one here, uh, instead of taking the main vent, it took and wrapped it on the side of the mountain, forming what we call parasitic, parasitic, parasitic cones. Then we have what we call a chumulo, a chumulo dome. From the word chumulo dome, uh, it re uh, 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 results from accumulation of lava at the vent, at the vent of a volcanic mountain. This vicious lava does not flow very far. Uh, instead, it piles around the vent where it hardens quickly, causing later, <coughs> later intrusion to force initial layers outward. I think you're seeing this one in Chumula Dome. This here, this uh, if you look at this kind of uh, a blackish layer, was the first eruption. The second eruption is happening, and lava, this new layer, is pushing out the former layer and forming a new accumulated layer, the accumulated layer at the vent accumulation of lava at the vent a volcanic mountain it looks like this and most times because it is simply accumulation of lava at the vent we normally these mountains kind of uh, volcanic mountains normally don't have visible craters for example we have Ntumbi in Tanzania we have then what we call a plaque dome. Thick magma may be forced out of the earth as a rigid cylindrical plug pushed uh, 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 pushed out by an explosive eruption. This kind of eruption happens uh, where very thick magma is pushed out, all cylindrical as it is. It is pushed out by force. Now at pushing it out by force, it simply comes out and then bulges, okay? Uh, bulges are normally, th this one is it's like, it's like the lava in a vent pushed out and then it bulges on top of the surface. This can happen, for example, if there was a former eruption that took place and then uh, after some years, another eruption is taking place and finds a hard overlying uh, uh, already solidified lava in the neck. Then the new by the, the new eruption pushes the older rock which had solidified before out onto the earth's surface and comes out as uh, the cylindrical plug. And when that happens, it forms what you are calling a plug volcan. If you observe this uh, photograph and look at the layers that are formed on this rock, it looks as if. Uh, this feature was pushed out vertically. It was pushed out vertically, and I think you said this one must have been, uh, for example, a the dike solidified uh, under the ground. But with the second eruption happening, uh, this lava, new, new layer of lava, pushed the former layer onto the earth's onto the earth's surface. An example of this one is the one we see at Hellgate. near Naivasha in, in Kenya. Another feature we can talk about here is the ash and cinder cone, what you call scoria. These cones are formed when acidic lava with a lot of gas erupts at the surface of the earth explosively and violently. Materials are blown to great height where they break into small sizes with ash particles being much smaller. This is a violent eruption. And when it happens so violently, uh, the lava is pushed out also violently. When this happens, you find uh, 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 ash is poured out at the same time, uh, at the same time lava is poured out, but, uh, but uh, under very great pressure. And so when this happens, materials fall back to the ground around the vent to build ash and uh, uh, to, to build the ash under the, under the cones. These cones are usually small and less than 3,000 meters in height above sea level and they usually occur in groups. If you observe, you observe our photo here, an eruption has happened but we are seeing both ash being thrown out and 
magma in form of what we are calling pyroclasts and when this happens uh, the pyroclasts or the particles fall back and on top also uh, ash falls back forming a very steep uh, a very steep uh, sided uh, mountain like that one this photo can also come in photographic interpretation and they can ask us to draw a landscape sketch of the photograph and on it mark a name to volcanic landforms i think i think you can see this is an ash and cinder cone but also we, can, we also have the crater on top they can also ask us to draw uh, to, to to mark a one drainage pattern we have a river here then they say two vegetation types we have trees and we have grass in short grass in this in the same photograph but this is an ash and and cinder cone it is very steep they are normally very steep uh, and they have smooth and have very 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 smooth very smooth slopes and examples of them we have uh, Nyabtom in northeastern Uganda Abila Gituk in northeastern Uganda Teleki in Kenya and Sarambwe in, in also in Kenya that is an ash and cinder cone then we have what you call a, a volcanic plaque is a central cone of solidified magma in a vent of, volcan of a volcano which is exposed by erosion of the surrounding of the surrounding cone the outer layer of the cone which are less resistant are eroded and the harder rock solidified or solidified magma in the vent remains standing out as a volcanic plug or what you call a volcanic neck so in this photograph we see volcanism took place and a mountain erupted a full mountain like you see with the dotted line showing that this was the former coverage of the of the mountain okay of this cone here so after eruption there was solidification of level of course uh of this, this mountain solidified and then so there was a solidification of magma or lava in the vent all this feature was uh, was pushed out on the earth's surface even the solidified magma here in the vent uh was was thrown out on the earth's surface okay now here we are seeing that after some time uh erosion occurred and there was washing away over the top layers and the top layers so the vent was found as a hard uh, was found harder and more resistant compared to uh, to the other to the, uh, to the other surrounding rocks so the surrounding rocks were eroded away and then the the, 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 the vent the, the level which had solidified in the vent was left standing out when that happens it forms what you are calling a volcanic plug or what we call a volcanic a volcanic neck examples we have Tororo, we have Mawanzi plug in Tanzania, uh, we have Luludiani, uh, Tindret and Timboro uh, in the Kano Plains of uh, the Kano Plains of Kenya, the Kano Plains of Kenya. Then have what we call a bar salt dome or a shield volcano, fairly flat topped high uh, highland which is formed by lava that is more fluid uh, that is basic actually lava that is uh, that is that is basic this is formed by by basic by uh, lava that is basic it's formed by basic lava the lava finds uh, sorry uh, not necessarily basic but inter uh, intermediate intermediate uh, the lava that is intermediate the lava finds its way to the surface through many fissures so what you call uh, all small openings and accumulates and builds highlands highlands look at this this is called a shield volcano it because when it, it takes a shape of a shield when laid down okay when you, when you put a shield down it takes this kind of shape it has gentle slopes 
okay with a very broad base look at the broad base the base is very broad with a broad a broad base and so when, when this happens uh, that feature formed is called a, a shield broken sometimes these shield volcanoes can be as tall as any mountains as you know so it's not that they are not they are, they are always short in some they are short but in some uh, some mountains are very broad but the difference is that they are they have gentle slopes and form a very broad base since the lava is uh, is uh, intermediate basalt domes are shaded with low altitude gentle slopes and a large and intensive and extensive base and an extensive uh, base and an extensive base mm -hmm. uh, an example of basalt domes in east africa we have Masabit in kenya mountain tukuyu in southern tanzania and look at this raised okay uh, fairly flat with gentle with gentle slopes that one forms what you're calling a basalt a basalt dome explosion craters these are shallow rounded and flat floor depression surrounded by a low rim of pyro crusts they are formed on the surface through violent explosion of gaseous material due to high pressure uh, blowing out country rocks leaving behind a large depression in this case here uh, an explosion crater uh, is found on the flat surface not on top of a mountain on the flat surface or at a low altitude flat surface okay and so when the uh, when, uh, eruption happens uh, it leaves behind a, uh, a funnel shaped depression uh, which is not wide small in size usually 500 me uh, meters in diameter uh, and less than around 50 uh, meters deep it is short but found on a flat on a flat surface as you see in our photograph they are not on top of of a mountain and when those craters are uh, or when the crater ring uh, is filled with water it forms what we call explosion crater lakes explosion crater lakes so most of the, the lakes uh, that are found uh, the volcanic lakes form, uh, that are formed on top of the surface are for, uh, explosion crater lakes for example lake katwe lake rototo Lake Nyungu, Lake Nyamununka, Lake Chegere, Lake Saka. These are found in uh, uh, Chegere, uh, Asaka, found in, in Fort Porto. In Fort Porto. Then we have what we call a crater. So, this is a small funnel shaped depression formed at the top of a volcanic vent. They are formed when magma cools and solidifies within the vent at cooling magma cools down downward forming a round funnel shaped depression around the top of the mountain around the top of the mountain equator is found on top of a mountain and examples we have chala in kenya Kadi, paradise on mountain masabiti Lake, uh, Lake Mahavura on mountain Mahavura in Chisoro in Uganda. We then have what we call a lava plain, an extensive low lying piece of land covered with lava. This volcanic feature is formed by the eruption of very free day or very free day or very free day magma or very free the lava lava flows from numerous fissures in the crust of the earth and spreads out completely covered in the original 
low lying landscape or, or valleys. If you see the lava in that video, that's what we are calling uh, basic lava. Basic lava. It flows for long distances, occupying, occupying low lying, occupying low lying areas. When that happens, it forms lava plains. For example, Moya Plain in western, in southwestern, southwestern Uganda. Lava Plateau. A raised flat topped extensive piece of land. This volcanic feature is formed by the eruption of very fluid, uh, very fluid or of basic lava very fluid or basic or basic lava or basic or basic lava which flows from numerous fissures in the crust of the earth and spreads out completely covering uh, covering the original land uh, landscape of hills of hills I think you're seeing this kind of eruption happens and lava forms the first layer at the first time from different fissures after some time of uh, solidification another eruption happens forming another layer on top of the other and then again another top on the top of the other former layer this forms a flat top -t extensive piece of land and when that happens uh, because it is formed by lava it gains the name a lava uh, a lava plateau a lava a lava plateau here the upside the lava here is intermediate and therefore it, uh, it, it is not explosive and does not run very far so it forms a lava plateau looking at this photo here first eruption occurred lava formed the first step after very many years another eruption occurred forming another step on top of the other after many years, another new card from another step on top of the other, and that one results in the formation of what we are calling a lava plateau. Examples of such plateaus in East Africa include Kericho, Thika, and Usingishu in, in East Africa. Let us look at a lava dam lake. It is formed by blockage of a river system which is highly. Lava Dam Lake is formed by a blockage of a river system with highly vicious lava. The lava flows and solidifies in a river valley, blocking the movement of water. The water collects behind the solidified lava, forming a lava dammed lake. A volcanic mountain in this form here erupts, but the base of that mountain was a river flowing. So when a uh, magma flows into the river valley and solidifies there, the river cannot, uh, can no longer flow across. Therefore, the water uh, collects behind, uh, 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 behind uh, the, the, the lava, the solidified lava, forming a lake. When that happens, that is called a lava dammed, a lava, a lava dammed lake. Examples of lava dammed lakes uh, in East Africa include Lake Bunyonyi, Lake Mutanda, Chahafi in Western Uganda. Just as you see, this mountain, uh, this uh, river, uh, this Lake uh, Bunyonyi was originally a river, but because of the intrusion of lava uh, into the flow of lava into the, the river Benson, magma, I uh, mean uh, the river, the water had to collect and accumulate in this area forming what we refer to as a lava dam d a lava dam d a lava dam d lake a lava dammed lake our next feature is a, a caldera our next feature is a caldera a caldera and we are saying a wide flat floor depression on top of a volcanic mountain it is formed in two processes one it can it is formed when the upper part of the volcano is blown off by a violent uh, re-eruption. Uh, the first eruption took place and then 
maybe there was a formation of a, cra of a crater on top of, a mount of, of the mountain and then after some time another eruption happens blowing off the former part that was occupying that upper, upper peak of the mountain when that happens and leaves back a flat floor depression a wide flat floor depression of this mountain that becomes a, a caldera that is how one way of how caldera is formed another way a caldera is also formed through a process called cauldron subsidence this is when the summit of a great volcan a volcano collapses inward collapses uh, collapses inward uh, the, the, because of the weight of this uh, of this lava that was here the uh, uh, the, 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 the volcano I mean the the, the top part of the cold, uh, of the mountain that is sitting in a position of the vent as magma is cooling down in the vent this particular part collapses inward inwards and when that happens it forms what we are calling a, a caldera and examples of those ones we have uh, we have Longonot, Napak caldera and then we have uh, uh, Mbangai in Kenya Ngorongoro Ngorongoro in uh, and uh, and Ngorongoro of course in uh, And in Gorongoro in in in, in 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 Tanzania, and these ones here uh, are formed in Gorongoro and in Mangai are formed as cauldron, as a result of cauldron cauldron substance. A caldera can remain dry like this. You see, uh, here we have a depression of a mountain, wide flat flat depression of a mountain. It can remain dry when filled with water. This water is rainwater. As rain keeps on uh, uh, keeps on uh, uh, raining on this area, the water can accumulate in this uh, in this uh, uh, caldera to form what we are calling a caldera lake. And examples of those caldera lakes, I think you you know that we have mountain uh, mountain Elgon uh, caldera lake. The other feature we can talk about. Is a hot spring a hot spring is a steam of water uh, flowing out fr from underground the stream of water uh, a stream of water flowing out from underground rocks to the earth's surface it is formed when rainwater seeps underground into caverns or or caves I think you see it is raining it is raining when it rains in this area here the water moves downward uh, flows into vertically into the underlying rock layers when that happens and that water gets into contact with a hot rock underground that hot rock transfers temperatures into into that water and then it, that water is warmed when it is warmed and flows back on earth's surface it for, forms a stream of warm water and that one is called uh, that one is called that one is called uh, a hot spring I think we are seeing that uh, warm water is outflowing okay here yeah, forming what we are calling a, a hot a hot spring an example of a hot I'll spring. also say to come here with belief that the goats will ease their delivery. It's the most exciting activity here is cooking of food. The temperatures are so high that even foods like matoke, cassava can be cooked in the water and get ready for eating. Most tourists prefer preparing eggs. <laughs> So next time we come out on a family, from the Kasuri, we reach Muchiri Kiriya. Ha! That is an example of a hot spring in Uganda. Uh, that is Sempaya, uh, Sempaya, 
hot spring it is found in in uh, in, in Uganda we have Chitagata also in Vishenyi also in, in Uganda we have Sempaya in Vundibujo also in Uganda Chisizi in Lukunjiri also in Uganda Majiamoto in Tanzania and other hot springs can be found around Lake Bogoria in Kenya the other one we can talk about is a geyser a geyser is uh, is also formed almost in the same process as a hot spring water seeps into the underground uh, and into the underground rocks and gets in contact with the hot with hot with hot uh, with hot with hot rocks but in this process here uh, this one comes out as a a fountain the water is, it, it comes out under pressure because of the high temperatures and thrown out as a fountain of water have you ever tried to cook tea in a, a tea in a, in a pressure a pressure kettle when the when the water reaches its boiling point it starts to, to the steam starts to be pushed out as a, as a, as a, as a jet okay of smoke or of steam Okay, when that happens, it is it forms what you are calling a a hot spring. This water, this steam is ejected explosively onto the surface to form what you are calling a geyser. This is also a volcanic landform since it is uh, the fact that water has got in contact with magma, which is uh, associated with volcanicity. The resultant landform is also then called a a volcanic landform. A geyser. <laughs> look like that yes that those those are geysers and they occur around lake bogoria lake huntington in kenya bundibujo district in in uganda in uganda then we can talk about what you call the fumaroles these are vents in the earth's crust that emit gases and steam now when eruption has uh, has occurred uh, uh, some uh, th there may remain uh, particles that are still burning up maybe along the vent inside along the vent so while those particles are still burning up the smoke keeps being emitted or as these rocks are cooling they keep emitting off smoke and as they emit off smoke uh, that uh, results in the formation of a feature that we call a fumar, a fumarole, a fumarole. And uh, uh, these uh, gases are uh, either sulfur dioxide or, or, or carbon dioxide, or carbon dioxide. And so when that happens and uh, a mountain is emitting such gases, it forms what we call fumaroles. Then if most especially the gas being emitted is mainly sulfur then uh, that one changes the name to what we are calling a sulfur a sulfur tara examples uh, 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 include a buru uh, that area called a buru between Naivasha and Gilgil and Aldama uh, riverine in Baringo district in in Kenya in Kenya so uh, those are some of the extrusive volcanic landforms that we can be asked about God bless you uh, as as I see you in our next lesson where we shall be discussing where we shall be discussing things to do with the importances of volcanism for any inquiry please contact me on those numbers.